Hey guys, I wanted to just give a little video on, on what to do with this lab. Um, so first thing you need to do is uh, search FET Gravity Lab. So just go into Google and search FET Gravity Lab. Okay, there should be the first one there. Click that play button. And then this is, this is it, okay? Um, so what you can do is you can manipulate. Oh, I didn't realize that made a noise that scared me. Okay, I'm just turning the sound off. Uh, so what you can do is you can manipulate uh, mass one, you can manipulate mass two, you can move this ruler here and you can measure the distance between them. And remember that you always want to measure from the center of mass and you can sort of see how that affects it. Really easy, straightforward lab to use. Oh, look at that. You can put it in scientific notation. That's, that's new. That's actually kind of convenient. Uh, okay, and then the lab looks like this. So this first one is just testing out, does it increase, decrease, remain the same? So this should take you five minutes to do. Uh, just sort of look at what happens and like I'll ask test questions on it so it's good to try it out on your own. Um, this last one, in any of your observations so far, have the two gravitational forces on mass one or mass two ever been different from each other? Uh, why? So if you take a look at this, Right, if I change the mass, look at that, the gravitational forces are the same, okay? And uh, a big reason why that they're the same has to do with Newton's third law, right? Um, whatever force mass one acts on mass two, mass two must act on mass one. And also the, the formula we're using for this is this. So. It doesn't matter what you make mass one and mass two, right? Mass one and mass two are always gonna be in there, so the formulas have to be the same, or the, the force of gravity has to be the same. The force mass one exerts on mass two, mass two exerts on mass one. So they gotta be equal and opposite, just like Newton's third law says. So that's what it's talking about with that one. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, with this one, you're gonna change mass one. Um, so you can reset the lab um, and then you want to manipulate mass one, okay? So if you reset it like this, uh, just delete that. So you can go anywhere from 100 to 1,000, so you gotta have 12 data points on there, right? And you can manipulate it uh, however you see fit, and, you, and then your responding variable is a force that they exert on each other, right? So manipulate it down here, responding here, um, your variable that you're manipulating is mass and your units would be kilograms, right? That's what I'm looking for for them. So it's really important that you record your controlled variables. So as I manipulate mass one, you can see that I control mass two. So write down what you control and also write down the radius that you're using to control. And you can use any radius, just you have to control it when you're manipulating mass one. Do the same thing, uh, but change the distance. So for the second one, um, you're going to keep mass one and mass two the same. Uh, record those controlled variables. You can make them whatever you want, but once you set them, you have to control them. Uh, and then you can start off by making them as close as you can. So this is as close as they can be. Um, so they're 2.1 meters apart. You can do 2 point, or not 2.1, that's 2.2, 2.8, 3.2, right? Just get 12 data points off there. They don't all have to be the same increments that you increase it, it doesn't matter. You just gotta get 12 data points in there. Um, and the furthest they can be apart looks to be about um, 9.6, right? Each one of these is 0.2. Okay, so record those values. Uh, so when you're recording your values in here, what you're gonna notice is it's gonna be um, 0 0.000415 like that. So I'm just getting a phone call. I'll call them back. 
So 0 0.0000612. And what you'll notice is 0 0.000113. You'll get values like this. So you need to put those in scientific notation. So if you put this in scientific notation, this would be 4.15 times 10 to the negative. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 6.12 times 10 to the negative 5. And this one is 1 1.13 times 10 to the negative 4. So you're going to run into a problem when you're graphing down here, right? Because your responding goes up here. And they all have to be times 10 to the negative, well, they have to be the same. So what you're going to do is instead of calling this 1.13 times 10 to the negative 4, you can make them all times 10 to the negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So instead of calling this that, you call it 11.3 times 10 to the negative 5. And now when I'm graphing them out, they're all times 10 to the negative 5 newtons. And if these were my values that I'm graphing out, right, I would want to do like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, like that. Um, so the 4 would go here, and the 11 would go up here. Then you get all those values to be the same. Okay. Um, so in the end, what we're doing is we're going to go, we're going to use this. So when we graph Fg and mass 1, this is our y value. This is our x value. So our slope is equal to everything else. Right? So then slope of your graph, this is your controlled variable. This is your controlled variable. You find a value for g. So you should get 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared is what you want to end up getting. Okay. Your other graph, when you do fg versus r, you're going to get a curved graph and you have to straighten it out by making it look like it does in the formula. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. But make sure you try this because this is the last type of lab we're doing this year and this is a very important skill you need for Physics 30. Okay, if you get an answer of 6.67-ish times 10 to the negative 11, you're good. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so if you have any questions, shoot me an email and I will help you out.